Uh, let me go straight to the, the agenda. So I will speak about I will speak about the key elements of, of the refrigeration. Then uh, we will have a look on the energy consumption. Then about the techniques to improve energy efficiency during retrofit. Uh, what is the design and sustainable approach in your project? We will speak about the HFC phase down and solutions, and then we'll go to the summary. So, what are the key demands of the refrigeration? So, basically, what are the not only the desirable, but what are the needs on in a refrigeration supermarket? Uh, means what are not the nice to have, but the must have. We need to have the safety and food uh, preservation with top quality and at any cost. We need to have the reliability, so no shutdown, no temperature issues on the system, and the food chain should be preserved. We should have the lowest operating cost possible, and we should be also sustainable. If we look at the energy consumption of a supermarket, and we take like 100% of our energy bill, so what is the, what the supermarket owner has to pay, let me say, every month, we can say that around 50% of the bill is made by the refrigeration system. Around 25% is made by air conditioning, 18% is the lights of the supermarket, and 8% is miscellaneous. Obviously, these are average. Each supermarket is different, different from each other, but these are average. At least can give us some priority. Uh, if we split uh, the refrigeration demand into the area kidneys, we can see that 70% of the energy bill of the refrigeration demand is on the compressor and condenser. Then around 17% is fans and lights, fans of the cabinets and lights of the cabinets. Then is a uh, huge part is 7% uh, is uh, the anticondensation heat and only 4% is the defrost. If we go to the compressor and condenser, we can see the 90% of user is on the compressor rack, where are all the compressors, 10% is the condenser. I would like to ask you to please remember this slide because we will use it also in, in the next slide, slides. So what are the techniques to improve energy efficiency? I will give really a brief overview because all my colleagues that will follow me will, will, will go too much, I mean, will go much more than me in detail. Um, let's speak first of all about the doors on the children's display and covers on the first display. This is an a retrofit action that can give up to 40% of the decrease in the refrigeration load. Means that out of that 50% of that uh, energy consumption of the main supermarket, we are going to impact directly on the 70% of the refrigeration demand. Because even if the doors and chillers are is an action that is made on the cabinets, it's impacting positively on the refrigeration demand. So basically on the compressor load. Uh, why I put as a first retrofit action? Because there is no other action that we can um, we can do uh, with that has so much value. 40% on 17% is very a huge, huge percentage. Then, obviously, we can give optimal food preservation because you know th there are doors, increases shelf lives, and then it's it's uh, it removes the unpleasant cold corridor. Cold corridor is when you have two open chiller in front of each other, and it's very cold in in in, in the middle. Normally, my wife and my daughter are running in the middle of the corridor and not, not stopping to buy any food because it's too cold. And uh, when the customer is saying to me that uh, uh, these doors and covers are creating a barrier between the food and the customer and the final customer itself, I'm saying no worries because the technology now is so advanced that basically there is no more barrier. Okay, yes, for sure, there is a physical barrier that is the door glass but if you see in this picture it's clear that uh, you don't see glass you see just the food so one person in front can stay there choose the food open the door 
take the food and, and go on. And you save energy. Then I would like to go very, very quick on variable frequency drives because my colleague after will speak uh, in much more detail. It can give 10 to 15% energy saving, reducing compressor cycling, and again, is uh, going to impact positively on the compressor activity, so on the main part of, of the refrigeration. Retrofit on the LED lamps, this is one of the most common retrofit actions that we are doing. 50% on energy savings, so a huge energy saving on the 17% of the load. Increased lifespan, low heat dissipation, improves product visibility. Easy fans, 70% increase in energy saving. We will speak also of this, about, uh, about this later. Uh, in this slide, I consider the condenser fan, not the evaporator fans, because normally the cabinets are already coming with EC fans. Why the condenser are still arriving with in on the supermarket with AC, but can be retrofitted with EC fans. Reduce maintenance requirement, reduce noise. Then remote monitoring system. As you can see here, I highlighted all the different equipments uh, of the refrigeration supermarket because with a remote monitoring system, you can control all of these different equipments. It can give us around 10-15% in energy saving, it depends on how much we push the, the optimization process. We can obviously do the lab management, we can control the, 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 the light, the door, and we can do preventive actions. Then, uh, last but not least, I put the refrigeration electrofit with HFO blend. Uh, why I put as the last? Because uh, if all the other actions are plug and play. It's are very easily uh, implementable to all the refrigeration supermarkets. A refrigeration and retrofit require a shutdown of the system. Require is a solution that has to be studied, in particular for, for what it regards the LT system. Uh, why? Because if it is true that the capacity of the R4, uh, R448, for example, is higher than the R404, but it's higher only on a empty, so on the medium temperature. While if we go to a low, low temperature, is much lower. Even if, um, anyway, the refrigerator with HFO plant uh, give an efficiency of 10, 15%, and is able also to reduce the GWP of the refrigerator from uh, almost 4,000 4, 4, to 1,000 plus, and is. Uh, uh, impacting on the compressor and the condenser. Uh, cons, uh, I say it again, solution to be studied, very high cost of the refrigerant. Now I would like to, to focus a bit on the project and design phase. Why? In a little bit uh, a webinar, I'm speaking about project and design phase because I'm considering uh, the retrofit uh, actions that are extremely good and extremely, uh, let me say, to be done, but are actions uh, that are uh, made to fix the errors done in the past. Not always, but often. Um, poor design during the project phase means poor performance. Poor performance means very high operational cost. Then, when the owner or the operation manager realize that has very high operational costs, then is thinking about the retrofit. Uh, let's uh, change the approach. I mean, let's think about technology and, 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 uh, and sustainability during the, the initial stage, the project and the design phase. So what is the right approach? The, approach is, uh, the right approach is the sustainability. Uh, sustainability is a complex com concept, uh, is based on three pillars the social, environmental, and economic. Um, environmental sustainability basically is the balance between uh, uh, what we use and what the earth and the nature is able to give. Is the balance, if the balance is positive, then the process is sustainable. If not, it's not sustainable. Economic sustainability refers to practices that support long-term economic growth. So basically, to be sustainable, a process 
an economy should be profitable. Um, economic indicators are capital costs and operating costs. As you know very well, capital costs represent expenses incurred when setting up the process, so basically the first investment. Operating costs give information about daily, monthly, yearly consumption. Uh, the economic pillar of sustainability is where more, most businesses feel they are on a firm ground. To be sustainable, a business must be profitable. That said, the profit cannot go against the other two pillars. So, in fact, profit at any cost is not at all what the economic pillar is about. So, let me introduce you a new concept that is the sustainable, sustainable profitability. That is, for a business, uh, means that an organization provides a service or a product that is both profitable and environmentally friendly. So, let's think about during the design phase to use the best frozen cabinets, for example, that has been designed to be uh, very high performance. Uh, let's think about the doors in the chiller. A uh, glass door can give up to 50 to 60 percent compared to open display. This is a UI mark, UAE market, so yes, we can do uh, stores with uh, with doors, and the people are going and buying. And you can see that uh, I mean there is no barrier between the customer and you uh, and the food. Sorry, uh, so you can go and buy. And then face it, we have to face this. Uh, HFC is out. Uh, UAE and the Middle East and many other countries are inside the Kigali Amendment. It means that start the process to phase out the HFC. If we speak about refrigeration in the supermarket, we are speaking about R404. As you know, probably know, there are different steps. I don't want to go into detail. But anyway, the process has started means that Middle East has to go out from HFC. Sooner or later, it's not a, not a matter of uh, if, it's just a matter of when. And why? Why we have to get, the, get rid of uh, the HFC? We well, want to introduce the global warming potential. The warming potential, the GWP, is a characteristic of each refrigerant. It's basically how, how much harmful is the refrigerant. Uh, against the, the environment. Uh, excuse me, Andrea, I have to interrupt you uh, briefly. Yeah. Um, it seems you have a problem with your earplugs. You are uh, you are sometimes very strongly uh, audible, but then you are you are fading away in and out. Could you unplug them? Like that, it's better. Let's try. Let's try with those. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Marcos. So I want to introduce uh, the GWP. So this is the global warming potential that is a characteristic of each refrigerant. I know if you heard this part or not. Anyway, is the how much harmful is uh, is a refrigerant? So if we speak about R404 as a GWP of uh, almost 4,000 uh, CO2 equivalent, means that the release of one kilo of R404 has the same effect of the release of four tons of CO2. As you can see here, I named different refrigerants. Uh, here, hidden, there are others. I don't want to bore you anyway. 4,000 uh, 4, for 404, 1,000 plus for 1348, and then are the natural. Three for propane and one for CO2. And then I did an exercise. The exercise is this I took what is the average emission for a vehicle. A vehicle emission is 120 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Means that if we take one kilogram of emission of R404, we are driving a car for 38,000 kilometers. It's the same. One kilo of refrigerant in the air is like to drive a car for 38,000 kilometers. Then I decided to, to, to consider this. An hypermarket first charge is roughly 1,000 kilograms, sometimes even more. Means that we are driving a car for 38 million kilometers. And then, if we go on and taking a, a lifetime of a vehicle, like 80,000 kilometers, and taking consideration the leakages that this hyper has, one hyper 
the life type of one hyper is like to drive 1,000 or 1,500 vehicles for their entire life. This is why it's very important to get rid of, the, of this efficiency. So what are the solutions? I selected two. Uh, there are different, okay, but I selected two. This is the water cooling. Means that each cabinet has on top a small compressor that is water cooled. And a low refrigerant charge, usually is hermetically sealed, so no leakages. There is a natural refrigerant inside. And water chiller used in the air conditioning can be used to cool down the, the cabinets as well. Heat is not added in this area as the other plugins. And each unit, each unit is optimized for efficiency. Then the other solution is the CO2. Uh, we have installed almost one year and a half ago the first CO2 system in, in the Middle East, that is in, in UAE, in, in Abu Dhabi. And after one year and a half, I can say that the, the solution is extremely reliable and extremely, extremely simple to maintain. And uh, it's uh, really a, a, a surprise, even for me, actually. <laughs> it's very, it's very, very uh, impressive, the, the, the performance that he, the, uh, that he has. Uh, so after one year and a half, I decided to, to measure the energy efficiency. So I took, uh, together with the customer, we took two uh, different stores that are comparable, one in Alain and one in Mazda City Center, that is in Abu Dhabi. One with R44 and one with CO2. Different uh, details, maybe we'll go on all in detail if you want in the Q&A uh, session. We calculate and we make the comparison. At the end, the CO2 with after technology is almost 50% more efficient than an R404 system. And actually impressed me too. So let's go to the summary. Several electrofit options are available. It's good opportunity to fix the errors done in the past. The most energy efficient refrigeration system start with a focus in the design and the technology during the design project phase. Middle East countries are now preparing for HFC phase out legislation. This is achievable while improving efficiency. CO2 so systems are energy efficient, as I showed you before, are reliable in hot climates, Abu Dhabi. And it's now well proven. Sustainable profitability that we spoke before should be the driver to put together economic profitability and climate and environment. Thank you.